no one's obligating you to be good or evil in this world. Mm. This world is not a good or evil place. That is a way of managing expectation as a system. If you are on the good side or evil side, frankly, you are being subject to the system. You have wonder what you would be able to do if you were the ultimate version of you, right? You would then have an easy time creating what you want, and yes, effortlessly enjoying life too. Now, you may know this already, the influence you have over your reality is far beyond what you've been told. Soon, you realize that your outer world is merely a mirror of your inner world, and we're here to connect the dots for you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to God. Welcome to God. All right, welcome back to God Mode 97, episode 97. We are almost to 100. Yeah, we're almost to 100. 97 plus 3 is 100. Math. I gotcha. Yes. <laughs> hey, you know what we're going to talk about is we're going to piggyback uh, off of what we talked about last, uh, where this year is going to be a chaotic year, but it is also the most epic year. And that's also because we... If we learn to leverage our mind more than we did previously, this year and all of its chaotic energy will actually serve us rather than anything else. And today's topic, we'd like to talk about how crazy powerful our mind really can be so that we can control the most chaotic year and, and make it into the most epic year. I feel like people have an appetite for this now because there are so many movies about the multiverse Oh man. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I didn't have like good words for it to, to break it down to somebody else. But then I saw everything everywhere all at once. And that blew my brains out. Right. And now you've got Marvel talking about into the spider verse, uh, Dr. Strange, the, the multiverse theory and, uh, how they're able to shift between these outcomes and get, Oh, let's get a slightly different Spider-Man with a slightly different hue and bring him back. So you had now have these conceptual proximities or like the closest, best, like uh, like that, it's like that. That's what I'm trying to describe. I don't know how to say it. Everything is exactly, there's an infinite set of parallel outcomes. One where there's a William Lamb, but his hair is blue. And one where there's a William Lamb, but he's got six toes. And My you know, hair was blue at one point. What'd you do to that? Guy? Prove that. <laughs> I, I Rick and Morty, prove that's another that. one. I gotta see that. <laughs> I was hit blue hair. No, it was just like insane. one year's Halloween party. It, we had one of those hairsprays. Oh, was Halloween blue. party. I thought you had, a, this was a life choice at one no, point. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was like 16 years old. It was old. an ephemeral choice. Need he did not that. commit. Still Rick and Morty, it. that's another one. Uh, you've seen it. Rick goes around all over these different dimensions and collects other versions of him, other Ricks. And then they created an entire government of just Rick's. What is it called? Like the Rick, uh, the Rick Sanctum. Anyways, so the idea is he literally collaborated with all the other geniuses. So this idea that there are infinite outcomes and dimensions that exist at the exact same time around us is kind of bananas to most people until you get, hey, here's some media and it, it cartoonizes, it gives a little bit of like, oh, okay, I, I can conceptualize this a bit. And the reason we're talking about that is the brain has a means of being to tap into other planes of reality. And you are also as a vibrational being able to go into different outcomes of reality. Picture the version of you that like, if you didn't go to school, then suddenly you're on this new trend where you're the person that uh, dropped out of middle school. And so then forever and always you're living that outcome, that variation of you. And so then that kind of represents a dimension. Well, there are all kinds of different dimensions and things that we, we can tap into and out of um, for the purpose of gathering information. And it's kind of crazy because people don't believe it until you realize there's actually a formula for this. There are layers of formulas for this. And in fact, there is so much money invested by the, uh, the U.S. Army. And they was the Stanford Research Institute that they paid to, to research yeah. this? Yeah, it was the CIA right. that paid them 50 mil in 1972. Yeah. The Stargate Project. Tell us about it. Well, so there's a lot of things we don't know that we don't know, right? Uh, what we do know is that it was interesting enough that the CIA gave $50 million to Stanford Research Institute. I think it was around 1972 to find out and to research whether it's possible to leverage the human mind to access data beyond this current dimension. And... 
what they found was that in the in the eighth dimension, which we actually can tap into by leveraging an alter state, uh, you are actually able to, and it's a very specific type of alter state, you're able to download information not limited by space and time. And Jeez. I sought out David Morehouse for this reason, because I was like, well, you know, why believe when you could know? Why bother believing when you could just know? And just real quickly, if, if someone's a new listener, um, let's talk about who David is, his background. Oh. And if you haven't, if you're not familiar with David, if this is your first episode, uh, I think it was like episode in the 60s, you guys did an interview with David. Yes. We'll find out for you which yeah, episode. Go back and check it out. Um, but yeah, let's, let's give the listeners, because if you're new to this podcast, or even if you've been listening to us for a while, and you're like, well, you just said, you know, talking about new year, new goals. Uh, you guys aren't talking about like discipline or focus. You guys are going into the deep end. Hyperspace. Well, yeah. Listen, <laughs> we're not the podcast, nor are we the company that's just going to tell you about, hey. The do, same stuff you do, can hear elsewhere. Exactly. So you're in a different realm. We're talking about different things because this is something you should be curious about. This is something that you should consider this what if possibility. So let's dive into mm. it. Well said. Episode 77, by the way. David Episode Morehouse. 77. With David, yep. Yeah, thousands you know, and thousands. I spent a long time when I was a kid and as a teenager escaping pain because I remember when I was seven years old, my mother had a, uh, had to go to the hospital for something that was life-threatening. And we're all safe and healthy here listening. And I remember how I didn't know if I would see her again. And so during that period of time, I remember as a kid, I was just crying every day. I was like, what am I going to do? Where's my mother? I was just seven, you know? And I thought to myself, well, I got to find a way to entertain myself. But it wasn't like a conscious thought. It was like, I need to find something that's truly interesting that takes my mind somewhere else. And that was an unconscious thought and behavior. So I, I, I actually went with my uncle to the library and looked at as many books as possible that would pique my curiosity. And all of which were books that were of the supernatural or of the ancient origins or, or human discovery of the extraterrestrial and other things. Now, I wasn't taking the path of, I'm going to look at aliens and all of the supernatural stuff and just be curious and maybe go and explore that. I was like, well, what are they, what's the, so different what I was asking was very specific. What's so different about the people that were having supernatural experiences compared to me or others who weren't? Oh. I was asking a very specific question. What are the conditions? And I was only seven years old. I'm like, what is the difference between them and me? Are there ways to recreate or experience or tap into that, right? And, and largely that was similar to the quest that was... Uh, that was seceded by the U.S. government in the 70s. They were like, well, we heard other countries are doing this thing called remote viewing. What can we do to leverage the human mind? Can we f find the best scientists in the country and then use them to, to help us figure this out? Specifically, right? they said, we know for a fact that Russia and China are both using it. We don't care how it works. We only know that it can probably be used against us. And that's a national security issue. And so we are going to invest heavily in A, shoring up our defenses against a psychic attack, and B, we want to offensively use it for data collection gathering. Hmm. This is a real, like, documented... Yeah, they talked about Germany, Britain, is Israel as well. Right. All of those were potentially engaged in it. Um, I mean, heck, I read documents where in the 1920s, the Russians were experimenting with remote hypnosis. So this is, like, not even news, right? Right. Because... Uh, and in the in the Renaissance time and the Victorian era, there were there were a lot of nations around the world. And and in fact, earlier, like I, if you read the art of war and the histories around the art of war, what were the Chinese doing in the old 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 Chinese empires? Mm. They were leveraging magic or the power of the mind. And and really, what magic is is the advanced usage of the mind and its interaction with the so-called physical reality. It's and pretty prevalent in the samurai and uh, ninjutsu culture as well. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Alter states and human influence on the physical, right? Yeah. So if we look at that, and I remember as a kid I was having that personal experience, but I'm sure I'm not alone. Many of us who are listening or who may be here 
uh, right now watching this may have had personal or collective experiences that you share that you're like, wow, that was not normal what I experienced. <sighs> that was not normal what I experienced. And that I experienced something that was also supernatural. And I thought I was alone or I thought it was just me. All this, this, all this is to say, when I found Dave at Morehouse, he told me something very strange. He, he actually asked a question. He said, do you believe that there is something beyond the physical? And I was like, of course. He's like, how would you like to not have to believe anymore? And I was like, wow, okay. And then he started to ask even stranger questions, which we'll save for later. Uh, probably better for people that are in our trainings. But then one time he told us, uh, you guys were present, uh, we asked him, David, where were some, some of the strange things that you've experienced when you were working for the government and that you could share? He's like, well, and he didn't even give us any buffer. He was just like, well, you know, <laughs> I saw these uh, giant Viking looking things in golden armor riding on a golden spaceship and they were giant in a different, definitely a different sector of the universe. And we were like, what? <laughs> That's not little green dudes. <laughs> no, 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 gold. Yeah, giant gold spaceship. They look like, like Nordic Viking gods. Yeah. That's what he said. And the crazy thing is how they categorize finding that. He said that apparently they go back to the same point in time where they're able to discover them. So they go back. It's like a loop at that point in time where that golden Viking was operating the spaceship. And they're like, yeah, we've sent a ton of different viewers there. And we can confirm, we, we're pretty sure it's aware of our presence. We can't interact with it, but it's kind of tilted towards us a couple of times. And they've done like different studies, trying to understand what the craft was. Like, do we hear what we're talking about? It's amazing. Yeah. And this is not a guy who's, as you've said many times, sitting underneath a bridge, uh, you know, doing ayahuasca, nothing against ayahuasca, or doing any other you know, <laughs> yeah. altered state yeah, drugs, not in a right? Van down by the river. Yeah, he's doing documentaries right now for the History Channel, all yeah. right? And he worked for the CIA. So this is a guy NDIA. who knows what he's talking about. And U.S. military, Delta Force. Yes. He was an elite soldier and an operator. Yeah, go check out his YouTube channel if you guys want to check into him more. He, he had these slides that blew my mind when he taught us. Oh, you yeah. know, and I took a few <laughs> different, mostly for the quotes, because at the... At a certain level, you have to accept that this is simply something you're capable of. And then when you get on the other side of that, the rest of this is going, okay, well, how, how far does this go, right? I think several episodes ago, I told the story of um, Gerard Butler, right? And synchronicity and synchro destiny and how he saw his birthday on the sign of this old wooden shop. And then it led to him becoming an actor. I told that story, I don't know, probably 20 episodes ago. And he used that as an illustration, but he also would reference all kinds of different military personnel that are talking about this thing. So once you get to the, the place of, I accept that this is, this is real, then you can start uncovering it. But some people have a hard time breaking through that longer. And in fact, it took um, probably the first hour of our lesson with him. And he was kind of structuring everything with, with validation and facts because he's so used to dealing with people that can't believe that this is physically possible, that there is a human propensity for tapping into the divine. And so he had to show you slide after slide. Here's another general that said this. Here's another secretary of staff that said this. In fact, this one is Major General Ed Thompson, Army Assistant Chief of Staff for Intelligence from 1977 to 81. And he said, I never like to get into debates with skeptics because if you didn't believe that remote viewing was real, you hadn't done your homework. We didn't know how to explain it, but we weren't so much interested in explaining it as in determining that if it w there was a practical use for it or for it to be used against us. And this is a Sergeant Major, uh, Major General, you know, from the Army. And it's just photo of the dude. We're talking about a group of pretty brilliant individuals and organizations that spent 50 million in the 19, in 1970s, mm. right? Regardless if you agree with what they do or not, I don't think that you can disagree that they're brilliant individuals that know that if they're going to spend that amount of money into something, it's going to be something that's going to be important. I mean, we said it on the last podcast and we said it on other podcasts, follow the money. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> what are they? 
the government's not going to just be like, well, I don't know, all the time. But the government most of the time is like, if they're going to do that kind of investment to research, especially CIA, who has that kind of intelligence that they've been gathering, as you said, from other countries, they're going to make sure this investment is worth their time. Yeah, you know, if we look at um, if we look War. at the world and we're like, well, that yeah. kind of stuff can't exist, and I don't believe we have those capabilities. Prove it, blah blah blah. Well, first off, we could prove it, and yep. it's not just me or us. It's it's there's a lot of data, but it's more like I I don't know the exact words for that metaphor. It's that um, there's this you know the old metaphor of an animal being chased by a predator, just st stick his head in the sh in the sand and pretend the predator's not there does not erase the presence of the predator. Yeah. Now, here's the interesting thing. Paradoxically, if the observer does not observe the predator, does the predator actually exist or not? Well, if we take that paradox into account, these, and you gotta be able to hold those two thoughts in your mind at the same time. One is, well, the predator still exists. One is, does the predator actually exist? If we hold those two thoughts together, as we determine how someone who looks at remote viewing or, or, you know, everything we do here at Upgrade, like unlocking the mind's true potential, people might be like, well, there's not much more you can do. A lot of it is circumstan circumstances and, and, and uh, skills and a number of other things. If people choose not to believe, will the so-called predator not exist? Or will it actually not exist? Now, if I translate all of that into plain English, these skills that allows us to become, since we're on the theme of predator, apex, elite, powerful, incredibly powerful human beings are unlocked. The skills that allows us to do that, do they actually exist or do they not exist? People can look at it and say, well, no, it doesn't exist, and therefore does it really not exist, or does it really not exist? Because they won't allow it to exist. No, is that it, making sense? It does. And, you know, one of the um, the synergistic feelings that I had when I met David was that you both have this curiosity to let people know that these skill sets do exist, and they're already dormant within within us. Um, and it's something that upgrade has developed to a, a better and a faster step-by-step -step process to get it out and something that David had as well when he was in the remote viewing because he helped design the operating system manual over there. Um, a conversation that I had with David when we were you know, getting to know each other over the past few months and he was you know, helping me learn more uh, to go on your point earlier when you were asking like, hey, does this actually, you know, do we believe this is real or not? He'd asked me if I had ever experienced deja vu. And I was like, of course, right? And he was like, do you think that everyone else on this planet may have experienced deja vu at some point? And I thought about it and I was like, yeah, I would venture to guess that most people had at one point or another have experienced deja vu. And he's like, what do you think the chances of that are? That with all these different backgrounds and different religions and different values and belief systems that we all are may have experienced this one thing that it that ties us together. And I was like, I don't know. It's a pretty crazy thought to think about. And he's like, well, that is when you know that you may have tapped into the collective consciousness. And I was, was like, well, tell me more about that. And then he actually texted me over a picture of the formula of deja vu that the CIA had come up with back in the day. There's a formula for it? Yeah, I have it on my phone. I have zero idea what it means. I want it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, David explained it to me. I was like, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> but I can share it with you. I don't know. You guys can talk. I'll bring it up. But anyway, my point of that is like, this is something that we were all born with. And what that mindset and T that we did where there were people in the room who when we did the experiment, I think you should explain it, explain a little more, but myself, Calvin, and there was someone else there who was trained as well. Uh -huh. I think it was D. Okay. Three of us had been through upgrade. And so when we did Part the of upgrade, right? D. Yeah. He, a yeah. little bit of the upgrade, yeah. right? Um, Still huge advantage. Exactly. So the, that's the whole point. The advantage is we all have the ability to tap into, as we call it, the internet. 
the data that's around us at all time. It's how fast are we downloading that speed? And when William took us through that experiment that day and did a, a target, myself and Calvin were the highest accuracy reporting back. Everyone else was pretty close, though. Well, not super close, but they were. They still had something resembling the target that Will, that William gave us that day. Mm. So I would say they sure. were like maybe three to five percent. You guys were like 60, 70 percent. Exactly. So yeah. it's like we're still hitting it, but how fast is the download speed to get it? I mean, like if someone is running MS DOS and Windows three point one versus if you have the latest iOS, what's going to be the difference in download speed, right? Oh yeah. I think a big thing to share and uncover here is... That's it, by the way. Oh, We're looking beautiful. at a formula for Deja Vu right now. For oh, the yeah, listeners. people are just listening. Yeah, which is crazy because we do this whole thing. Okay, I don't know what to do with that now. That looks terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to throw that into chat GPT, and I'm going to say, write me up a formula and a day-to-day -day schedule to has me fulfilling out that crazy-looking equation. I think it's moment in time would be the M, and then... Yeah, we'll have him explain it again. In the yeah, train. we'll have David on to explain it because I'm Take not going to try. Eggs. One <laughs> thing about the, the formulas is that think about Wi-Fi, right? Imagine if you were born into this world and uh, you became an adult, but you never learned about Wi-Fi. And then you come to you know our current society and you're like, how is this connected? And how is your phone and computer com connected? Hmm, I'd be freaked out, yeah. And then we're trying to explain to you, hey, there's Wi-Fi. They're like, what the heck is Wi-Fi? Well, it's just this wireless transfer of information and you'd be like well how does it work there's no cables that's impossible <laughs> and then you'd be like that's magic isn't it right so just because we can't explain how the mind is connected to one another and to something beyond this dimension mm -hmm. does not mean we don't have it right now does it mean that we have it we actually know that it does yeah. and the cool thing is the really cool thing is most people have no idea how far we could go. So let's uh, try to bring it back in a little bit. Now that we've blown people's minds in this sense, how do we use this this year? And as we said, the last episode is like, hey, this may be the year of chaos. But what if you had this kind of superpower, which we're already insinuating that you do. But if you really learn how to hone this skill set and master it, what could be the potential for you? Superheroes are born in the times of chaos. That's right. I found my cat using it. Let's go. Let's talk about that story, and we'll come back to Superhero. Because you literally were, I mean, we went, we got to Vienna. We were doing some some video stuff in Vienna. We were filming some cool stuff for Upgrade. Yeah. And then... It was an awesome vacation. That was such a good vacation. <laughs> it hey, it was so a fun. work trip, guys. You should release the video one of these days. Dude, we'll get to it another day. <laughs> got lots going on. But yeah, we traveled last summer me michael and william through and then calvin met up with us and we traveled all over europe and i had my brother at home because he's there to watch my cat because my cat is the most important thing hi girlfriend among the most <laughs> important things in the world to me she's that's my number one cat people get it and my brother had unfortunately a door got left open one of the nights and my cat got out and i was ready to i found out about it so i'm in the bathroom booking a ticket to fly home. Mind you, we had like 10 days left on our travel itinerary. And we I'm just the got one, there. Yeah, all the, we just got there. I'm the one with the camera. I'm filming everything. And I'm going home because my cat's missing and nothing else matters. Michael caught wind of me trying to book my ticket. So he goes back out there, snitches, and goes... Dude, Will I was nervous. I was like, either... <laughs> Either I'm going to say something right now to William to really get, like, show him how serious the cat thing. Because you, I get it. You're a cat person. William and I are not cat people. I, Wait, I like cats. What are you talking about? Okay. You don't even look. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't know how serious it was. It was, yeah, I was going home. I was just, yeah, you know, full Daughtry. And so uh, you basically said to him what? You're like, I just looked at him and I was like, you should do something. <laughs> 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 and I gave him a look and nodded. I didn't really say much else. And but I like William and I had that rapport at this point. So he's like, looks back at me. He's like, I should do something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So walk us through, Will. What happened? Well, so I was like, oh, he uh, needs help. Let's go sit down at a restaurant. It, believe it or not, humans tend to get into an altered state naturally when you're sitting down eating a meal in a warm, comfortable place. So. We found a wonderful restaurant. We got a seat. We sat down, and Calvin, it was our first time hanging out with Calvin. 
right? So he's like, who? He's never even taken our training at that time yet. He's already paid for our training, but hadn't joined yet, mm. right? Or I hadn't done the live event yet. Yeah, he'd listened just this this podcast. Yeah, you know, he hadn't missed an episode. He watched it from F1 to wherever we were then. Yeah. yeah. So here we are in the restaurant. Eating some good schnitzel. Is that how you say it? Yeah, that like deer steak, whatever. Veal. Veal. Veal, yeah. So we were sitting there and I'm like, hey, you want to find your cat? And you weren't ne- you weren't necessarily in a good state at the time. I actually think she said, yeah, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, I'm flying home to go find the cat. And yeah. you're like, well, hold on, let's try something else first. And at that point, I had been through the upgrade trainings. I knew that I was, if I can get into a calmer state, you might be able to pull something out of your backpack of secrets and and try something. I'm like, sure, I'll try anything, Will. What is it? That was when I knew we were going to be partners, actually. I'll tell you the truth. That moment you were able to get into control of your state, you were like, I believe in William enough. And it's not really me. It's like you believe in yourself enough. I believe in the information you've spent 10 years in a bunch and millions of dollars researching. I'm like, there's got to be something in one of these mystery monk books that you've cracked open. (laughs) And it's like, (laughs) here's how you find your cat from Vienna in a steakhouse. And I was like, oh, thank goodness for that chapter. Like, what is it? (laughs) (laughs) So, So what we did next was nothing short of Marvel, I think. You drop into an alter state, exactly the the alter state that we need you to be in. And then we we visualize. So what we did was we utilize visual construction, a, a technique to basically construct the data that is not in this dimension, but it represents what's going on in this dimension. So that you can visualize where your cat was. We took you on this, I mean, we call it a journey essentially, but you were tapping into the connection with your cat and you were leveraging what your cat was seeing Yep. and transferring that data because guess what? Your cat's seeing something at that moment as long as the cat's awake and the cat's seeing something and that visual signal is interpreted by the cat's brain while it's going somewhere it's not just in the cat's brain. And especially with the owner and the cat's connection, you were able to tap into it. And so we leveraged that data. And what did you see? Uh, so for people that have seen Star Wars, Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, Luke, or not Luke, Anakin is kind of in this fever dream towards the end of the movie where he sees Padme starting to pass away. And it's like heavy and it's dark and it's vignetted and it's kind of cutting in and out. So I dip into that altered state and slowly kind of a, a just a feathery kind of not clear picture starts coming into place and I see something cutting across, sunlight cutting through it. Like, oh, those are leaves. Uh, there's sunlight coming down through leaves. I was like, oh, this is my backyard. Okay, okay, I know where we are. So I'm seeing that and then the scene kind of changes. It's still like a fever dream. It's not clear, but I'm getting data. I'm not fighting it, I'm not questioning it. I'm just taking it as That's it is. That's key. Yeah. And so, okay, well, where, where is it now? Oh, it's feeling cold, and it feels like dirt. And I was like, cold and dirt. I was like, well, it's, it's sunny He's outside. saying something very important here, the kinesthetics. Keep going. Yeah. So now it shifts from out there. Now it's cold and dirt. Okay, where's cold and dirt? I was like, oh, man. Well, it's under the house, but I blocked every possible way to get under the house. You guys have been to the old house I stayed in. It's about 9,000 square feet. I shared it with some buddies. It was a big house from like the 30s. And so it had this huge footprint and the whole thing had a, an underground part to it. I had co- totally enclosed it. So there was no way, but then it keeps going and it's further and further in the cold and the dark and uh, the dirt. And I'm like, is she really under the house? Cause I've had people out there looking for like a day, like yelling treats, the whole nine yards, I'm losing my mind over here in Vienna, Vienna. I'm like overturn every stone. Right. But that's, I could not shake that that was what I was seeing. Those are the data signals I was getting. She's under the house somehow. So I finally come out of it, right? And the first thing I said is, I I think I know where she is. So I pull out my phone and I text my brother and I say, can you look on this side of the house and see if this particular uh, access point under the house, see if it's somehow open? Shouldn't be. I reinforced everything. Well, it was. The, I'd put a little door there to, to block it up. The whole thing had fallen forward. I don't know how. I think it was a storm or something. And she had gotten under the house. And she was so far in there, I had to call critter control. And she, they got her, like three hours later, exactly in the spot that I saw her. 
it was bananas. If you're listening to this, this is a real story. And it's, I didn't know how to process it, but I was okay with it because I got my result, right? I found my cat. But then in retrospect, you go, well, what the hell was that? <laughs> you know, did, have I always been able to do that? I was in a, in a state of desperation, you know, to a degree. I ha it had to work. Had to. Now, humans are interesting. We're motivated by pain or pleasure, right? And so just like when I was younger, I, I was mentioning that in the story earlier, that was in a lot of pain, not seeing my mother, not knowing what's going to happen. I was desperate in finding a way out. I was desperate in finding somewhere where I could feel euphoric joy or pleasure or something that wasn't pain. And so if humans are in that painful state, they tend to find a way out because they're very motivated. But the problem is what we talked about in the last episode, the middle class or even the upper middle class oftentimes are so comfortable, they don't feel the pain. And I'm not saying creating more pain. We have a different solution. Because they don't feel the pain, they don't feel like they need to find the way out. It's like putting, hmm. putting a frock in warm water. Warm water. And gradually, and, and no animals harmed in this conversation, right? But like you get the analogy. You don't want a gradual increase of pain. You want to solve the problem before any indicator of pain shows up. And this year is a collective signal of pain where there's chaos. And if you're not personally feeling the pain, that's great. Still, it's time for you to solve the problem before it hits you. And if you're feeling the pain, definitely change it. And the best solution is to understand that everything we've been talking about, this so-called, the, the reason we're able to use things called remote viewing or other techniques to traverse beyond space and time, it lies right here. This is the secret, is that the entire physical reality is merely a perceived exterior. And I think that moment that you had with, you know, finding Evie, right? You proved to your conscious and your unconscious mind in that moment that, hey, you had that alignment and you could tap in and then you aligned with the collective human consciousness and gathered that data to you, right? Mm. The visual, the kinesthetic, everything that was in your, in your mind's eye at that point. So if our listeners are curious, like, well, how could I use this in my lives, right? Imagine if you had a goal that you were so like giddy about, just like you had to have it, just like in that moment, Brady had to figure out how to find his cat. What would you do with it? If you had a skill set that you could tap into that future. That's it. Now combine that with a mechanism, a system like upgrade that helps you up, you know, upgrade your mind so you can tap into that superpower much, much faster where you can clear the clutter and the noise and get to the true data. Because sometimes we'll hear things we'll, and we'll, we'll be like, oh, is this real? You know, there's noise in my head. Right. And it, you know, I've been there too, right? And it's when I wasn't trained. And when you're not like the trained. Modem. Remember when we used to turn on the modem <laughs> internet? <laughs> oh, God. That noise. That noise. <laughs> I, I practice it. On my spot. <laughs> yeah, I practice it a lot. It's, it's so true though, right? When that speed is, that's what you feel like sometimes. You're just puttering through life. Upgrade allows you to clear that faster and tap into this. So if you're wondering what's the combination, that's the combination. You know, I don't say we didn't warn you though. If you, if you never had the joy of using modern computers, modern iOS or Android, like imagine if you love gaming and you have the latest gaming computer and you're playing with it. And then all of a sudden, that is, you know, you're taken back to the 80s and you have to use an old OS and everything's pixelated. You would hate it, right? Or you're forced to use Palm Pilot. Imagine if I switch out your iPhones for, with Palm Pilot. Yeah. Blackberries. Old Blackberries. Oh. A little ball wheel. <laughs> See, the warning is if you do upgrade your system and then you get data, you can't go back because you would hate it. Now most of you who are listening are okay with the level of noise that you're experiencing with what's actually truth, what's actually out there, what the data you actually have access to. You're okay with all the noise and maybe only getting 1% of the truth or data. 
But once you start tasting the flow of that real data and having access to it and knowing that's actually your, your divine right to gain access to that data and you can't go back. If you go back, you're going to be like, you're going to be, I mean, it's going to be worse than if you didn't have access to it. So, I mean, just a little warning, but would you rather be a rat in a cage or would you rather be the true being? And, and look, I, I'm saying a rat, it's, there, it's, there's a lot of symbol that I'm saying that for, not saying that we're actually rats, but if you consider what happens if you're freed, if you're freed and you have to be caged again. And we don't, I think that's where the beauty, the beauty lies in it and the possibility of what happens if you do unlock yourself, right? Because we don't know what the potential of every human being could be if they're unlocked to that next level. Right? Just a small increase in percentage. No, not yet. Right? We have a vision of it. We do have a vision of it. And this is why we're so passionate here at Upgrade about this mission to get this information out there because we are so curious of what the collective could be if every individual had this ability. Mm -hmm. And someone may be listening to this now, maybe like, oh, I don't know if I believe what you guys. And that's a choice that if you're going to choose to not believe, then you're going to suppress this. Put your head in the sand. Available. Yeah, you're going to yeah. be, is the predator still there? So this information's out there, right? We want to know. That's what we're curious about. We want to know what the collective potential is. People are like, no, who's taking the Super Bowl? Not curious about that. I want to know what my brain can do. Yeah. Because that's been with me my whole life. And it's gotten better. And I've, I've used it for cooler things. I want to know more. Like, that gets me up. Think about how you won a house in two days. Yeah, yeah, that and happened. And then you found your cat. These are indicators of someone who has access without fully knowing they have access yet. He's, he's talking about on a Mr. Beast video, I won an entire house for a dollar. And two days prior to that, I had a phone call with him. Way before I'd ever been a client, I'd met you once, you know, like eight years prior. We happened to get on a phone call. We happened to catch up and talk. Um, I happened to have a day off for Mr. Beast and I was like yeah, talking. I'm like, I'm, I'm chewing on things I hadn't chewed on before. Like what? Like what I actually wanted instead of just what I needed to get through the day. But I was working 18 hour days. It was all I had room for. It was just getting through the day. But then like looking up and seeing, hey, where, where could the puck go? If you added a little design, do it for funsies. Just say you could design all of this. It's a sandbox. What would you design? And I had never allowed myself to do that. We talk so much at length about what we don't want, right? Oh, well, you know, tell me about what you want in life. Oh, and people start rattling off a list of all their don'ts because they couldn't, they don't have a ready, they don't have a ready list available of, of things you do want. So you asked me that and I probably rattled off a bunch of don'ts, but then you're like, focus, like, what would you specifically want? I'm looking around in the place I'm living in. Well, I don't want to rent anymore. You know, I'd like a house soon. Two days later, I want a whole freaking house. So yeah, there. it's not just me though, right? It's it's my open, I have a highly open uh, set of traits to where I'm open to su suggestions that I know could enrich. But this is anybody, this is our listeners, this is anybody that's watching this. There are so many more things that you are around the corner of being able to start inheriting, and drawing to you. And yeah, some call it manifestation, and then there's no action behind it though. So they have wishes and no action. And so this is action. This is what we're talking about. Remember, remember when uh, in the Matrix film, Morpheus was looking for signs that Neo was the one, but he always believed Neo was the one, right? And it was interesting when that was starting to happen, when, and when some of the signs were starting to happen, Morpheus was like, this is a sign, right? Well, I'm always looking for signs. And these signs are not some metaphysical or, or some old, you know, hard to prove intangible signs. I'm talking about if someone is suggested that they're going to experience something that they desire and I see that they actualize it, I'm literally looking for these people, looking for people like you, because I know that we can't upgrade humanity alone. And even the, the few of us here, we can't do it all by ourselves. 
to upgrade humanity for us to collectively experience what could be wonderful if we were all to be unlocked. I think that there's a, sure, there's a scarcity at play that's like, well, what if a bunch of people that are unpredictable become unlocked? That might not be good. Well, then why don't we teach them what is actually good consequences? It's like it's education at the highest level, right? Wow. And so what has happened historically is that humans have gotten to a point where they have to be so motivated by pain or the pain has to be so great for them to be motivated. Mm-hmm. And look, I leverage that still for myself. I bet yeah. a lot of people listening do. That sounds familiar to them. Yes. Yeah. What can we do to get so much pleasure that we have the same level of motivation as if it was extreme pain? We have to design them. It's not something that just happens to us. We have to design them. Otherwise, we become those people that are waiting for extreme pain to motivate us. That's not okay, right? We will never get into a new era of civilization where we are actually at peace. The so-called problem of, with world peace and hunger and war and, and greed, those are not going to be solved if we're all sitting around waiting for extreme pain to happen and get motivated. <laughs> no. If you're sitting around in a scarcity mindset, right? Because yeah. you, you and I have been asked that question a couple of times. Um, remember at dinner, we were in Nashville. We got to ask that question, right? Like, hey, with this, you know, this power that you guys have, how do you stay on the good side, right? And that's right. How do you guys, you know, not use it as persuasion or like that? It's like, well, that question right there, you can tell what they're focused on: scarcity versus abundance, right? And their presuppositions around if people were to get this power. What would happen? Well, now they have a presupposition around people in general. The question tells me about more about them than cool. anything. Exactly, mm-hmm. it's their filter because it's like they're presupposing the world world's good and evil, what uh, or or pain and pleasure, where we're presupposing. Well, you have no idea how much more pleasure you can have if you just make everyone win, and educate them on how to win even more. So we are synergistically winning, yeah. right? So if we can do that then why would there be pain? We could just have pleasure or more pleasure. Why would I choose pain? And I think we're also coming from, at least from my personal view, we have seen so many people be unlocked and upgraded that from personal testimony, they they choose pleasure and they choose good things. When you see someone go and find their alignment to their higher intention, it's like the words that they're using to describe what they ultimately want are around beautiful, loving, unconditional love things and, and pleasure. Yes. So we know through, not not believe, know through over and over testing it, that's what human beings want. Yeah, if they own, if they act out of scarcity, it's because they have trauma they have not been able to clear. And we have tools designed to do that in phase one of when they are experiencing upgrade. We literally mitigate that in the beginning. This is for everybody. It's now some people may have so much trauma that they themselves may have esteemed themselves as lost causes and so gone so far out that they don't have good intentions for people. But we're talking about the general population here, people that mean well, people that maybe don't have all the resources to do good. But if they did, they'd probably do it. They probably do some good, you know, and I think that's most people. It's definitely anyone listening to the show. It's there, you know, it's on the table to learn. So yeah, guys, this has been an amazing conversation. Any last thoughts? I would say that if someone's out there right now and if they are feeling like, hey, I'm that extreme case, you know, Ooh. right? Like if I'm I I, like I'm on un, I'm unhelpable, right? Uh first of all, you haven't met us. You haven't been reframed by upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> and I would challenge you to see what kind of secondary gain you may have. And secondary gain is simply what is it worth to you to keep the problem versus not getting the actual result that you want. So if you're, you know, going to die on that hill, that you are that special case, that's your choice and that's your decision. There's another flip side to that. And you can choose to be the superhero that you are, the divine being that you were born with. So if you're curious about that, I would encourage you to check out more episodes of our podcast, check out our free focus challenge you can find on upgrade.com. U-P-G-R-D, no A or E in that. Test it out. Prove it to yourself with us. Yeah, I'll add to that too. It's uh, No one's obligating you to be good or evil in this world. Mm. This world is not a good or evil place. That is a way of managing expectation 
as a system. And so if you're, if you are on the good side or evil side, frankly, you are being subject to the system by wow. identifying with good or evil. You're mm -hmm. literally trapping yourself by the system in their rules. You're, you're subjecting yourself labels. to the system. Exactly. Wow, and wild. the label, because the label defines boundary. And if the label produced by the system to categorize people, you take it upon yourself to label yourself good or evil, you've literally imprisoned yourself. And so I would encourage you to free your mind first that you could be whatever you want and whatever doing good or evil, that's actually just a label for, by the system to manage humans. Yeah. If you want to be truly free and experience the ultimate pleasures of life, you need to explore what you haven't considered, which oftentimes is perfect alignment with your divine potential which goes far beyond any earthly purpose or, or pleasure. And I'm not even talking about some religious or spiritual things. We're talking about your true nature. There is no categorization of spiritual, mental, physical. They're all one. I wouldn't say, oh, it's your arm's pleasure versus your head's pleasure. I'm talking about hmm. your whole being, which exists across multiple dimensions your unconscious mind being the interface, and you're only conscious of this fourth dimension, which is space and time. We're here to help you stretch that possibility of exploring different worlds and experiencing pleasures beyond belief. So stop identifying with just good or evil or anything in between. Allow yourself to be free. Do what's good for the system, and you'll be part of the system. But do what's good for the whole you will experience a wholeness of life. That's right. I'm going to leave us with a quote because we're going to be dropping a, a course with David Morehouse. There's going to be uh, some very exciting things in the future. Mm. And a lot of people are researching him, trying to, they're like, how is this guy real? And so he's going to be coming to the upgrade ecosystem. There are going to be a standardized set of trainings, protocols, everything. So I'm going to leave a quote from the director of the CIA from 1977 to 1981. His name is Admiral Stansfield Turner. And he says, there is absolutely no question in my mind that there is a timeless and infinite human ability to see beyond the physical. And if our enemies have it, then we must find it, develop it, and use it. I don't care if it is only 6% accurate. If it is 6% accurate information, that I cannot glean by any other means, then it is intelligence dollars well spent. He's saying words that he's not saying. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty wild. And, uh, and this is, there's no special club. I guess there is. It's the, I let myself join the special club club. Yeah. That's what it is. So join up. You yes. Know, open yourself Enjoy up. Enjoy this 2024 of upgrade, upgrading your life, right? Enjoy making choices that will help you win and experience more pleasure than ever. Yeah, please May subscribe to our year. channel, like it, share with some people that you know as well, or on YouTube as well. We're about to get wilder in what we're going to talk about in the future episodes. Keep one thing in mind, if you would, is that if you are listening, actually listening, I think you may find that there is something that you're supposed to do this year that is different than the year before. And I'm not speaking vaguely. I think you know what it is. Allow yourself to explore what that is this year and really explore. Listen to that voice inside of you. Heck yeah. Do it. You're here for the cheat codes, baby. This is God mode. That's right. <laughs> Talk soon. Talk soon. Thanks, guys.